As of last week, a Tesla can be paid for with Bitcoin. As of this week, all Fireship courses can be paid for with Bitcoin. And as of the end of this video, your product can also be paid for with Bitcoin. I've always been pretty skeptical of crypto, but the more I work with it as a developer, and the more the Fed runs the money printer, the more I like it. But most importantly, I want to give my customers choice. If the customer wants to pay with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, or whatever, they should have that option. In today's video, you'll learn how to implement cryptocurrency payments on the web using the Coinbase Commerce API, giving you the ability to receive crypto payments in a variety of different formats. First of all, how does a cryptocurrency payment work? Well, unlike a credit card payment, which is processed by a central authority, a crypto payment gets broadcast to a peer-to-peer -peer network around the world, where miners compete with their computing power to confirm that transaction on the blockchain. That process can take time, maybe 10 minutes or so, before the transaction is fully confirmed. On Coinbase Commerce, the first thing you'll do is create a charge, which is more like a payment intent. It has an amount and description and can be denominated in US dollars. When a charge is created, it has a lifespan of one hour, and Coinbase in the background will monitor the payment networks looking for a payment to be confirmed on this charge. The charge also provides a URL hosted by Coinbase where the user can either pay with crypto or their Coinbase account. Now, after the user submits their payment, Coinbase will fire a webhook that can notify your server that the charge is now pending. It's at that point that you can notify the customer that the payment has been received, and we're just waiting for the final confirmation on the blockchain before we ship it out. At some point in the future, Coinbase will see the transaction is confirmed, and will send another webhook to your server, notifying you that everything is good to go, unless something went wrong. Like a user may have overpaid or underpaid because crypto is so volatile, or maybe they accidentally made multiple payments on the same charge, in which case you'll need to manually resolve the charge. Things like that shouldn't happen often, but those are just some of the caveats to be aware of when working with crypto. In addition to Coinbase Commerce, you might also look into BitPay or CoinGate as alternatives. Or, if you want to use a currency that's designed specifically for digital transactions, you might want to look into something like Kin. To get started, the first thing you'll need is to own a little bit of crypto. I'm not saying that to try to pump Bitcoin or anything, but because Coinbase Commerce doesn't actually have a sandbox for testing payments, so in order to test your implementation, you'll need to have a wallet with some crypto in it. The easiest way to do that is by setting up a Coinbase account. And if you use my referral link in the description, you and I both will get a $10 referral reward. And this video is not sponsored by the way, I actually use Coinbase Commerce for the implementation on Fireship.io. In any case, the next thing you'll need is a Coinbase Commerce account. When you create an account, it will automatically generate a wallet for different cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, Bitcoin, Litecoin, etc. Allowing other users to send you money on these respective blockchains. On the dashboard, you'll get a breakdown of all your payments. And one thing that's worth pointing out is that if you have a static product where the pricing doesn't change, you can create a checkout and then embed it directly in your front-end application without having to write any client-side code. But in this demo, we'll do it the more developer-oriented way by creating a charge that can handle dynamic pricing and data. To add Coinbase to a backend server, we'll need to go to the Settings tab and create an API key. This key is how you access your Coinbase account from a server, and it should never be exposed in your front-end code. But now we need a server. And my favorite way to get one into production quickly is with Firebase Cloud Functions. Sign up for a Firebase account and install the Firebase command line tools. Then run Firebase init functions from the command line. That'll give us a Node.js project in the functions directory. Go ahead and cd into it. Then we can install the Coinbase Commerce SDK for Node. And at the same time, install cores or cross-origin resource sharing so we can make requests to this function from a front-end application. In the JavaScript code, we can import the Coinbase Commerce client as well as resources. The client is used to identify our project with Coinbase, which we do by calling client init with our secret API key. Now, there are many different things you can do with the API, but we're interested in creating a charge, which is available from the resources object. From there, we can start defining our cloud function, which is just an HTTP endpoint that we can call from any application. To call it from the browser, we'll need to enable cores, which we can do by importing the cores library and setting the origin to the wildcard character. Then we can pass the request and response objects to cores and define the business logic inside of its callback. Now, normally, you probably get some data from the request, like a product ID, and then go and fetch that product from a database somewhere. But in this case, we'll define our charge data as just a generic widget that's priced at $9.99. One useful tip here is that you can store metadata, like a user ID, if you want to reference the user in the future when changes happen to the charge. Then to create a charge on Coinbase, we simply call await charge create with that data, and then send it back down to the client as the response. Once that charge is created, the user then has one hour to make their payment. 
Let's go ahead and see the charge in action by running Firebase serve to serve the function on localhost 5000. Now let's build a front-end application with vanilla JavaScript in this index.html file. And you can get all the source code for this project on GitHub, by the way. The HTML just has a button that says buy something with crypto. Below the button, we have a script that makes a reference to the button and when it's clicked, it will fire off a request to the Cloud Function endpoint using the Fetch API and will convert its response to JSON, which contains all of the charge data from Coinbase. There's a bunch of useful data on it, like the current exchange rates and the entire timeline of the charge itself. But to get the customer to pay, we need to show them the hosted URL, which contains the addresses and QR codes to our crypto wallets and allows the user to connect their own Coinbase account if they prefer. If the user decides not to pay, the charge will expire after an hour. But if they do pay, we then need to listen to webhooks from Coinbase. When the payment is initially sent but not confirmed, we'll get a charge pending webhook. But in order to listen to webhooks, we need to have a URL that's available on the internet that Coinbase can send data to. Go back to the settings panel on Coinbase Commerce and click the button to show shared secret under webhook subscriptions. Whenever Coinbase sends a webhook to our server, it signs the request. And we can use this secret to verify that the request is valid. No matter what API you're working with, it's always very important to validate the signature because otherwise any hacker could then pretend to be Coinbase and send webhooks to your server and you wouldn't know the difference. Back in our code, we'll set up a second HTTP cloud function called webhook handler. The first thing it'll do is grab the raw body of the request, which is just the request in a binary format, along with the signature, which is contained in a header on the request. And lastly, we'll make a reference to the webhook secret that we got from the Coinbase dashboard. From there, we can set up a try catch block to catch any errors that might happen when verifying the signature. We can pass these three values to webhook verify event body, which verifies that this request actually did come from Coinbase. It returns us with the event data from Coinbase, which itself will have a type like pending, confirmed, or failed, and also contains data about the current state of the charge, which you'll want to use to implement your own business logic. On Fireship, for example, I immediately grant access to pro content when the charge is pending by updating a database. But if the charge fails or becomes unresolved for whatever reason, then I revoke access and take steps to resolve it. The logic here is highly dependent on whatever it is you're selling. If you sell a physical product, for example, you might want to print a shipping label after the charge is confirmed. I think we're about ready to ship this baby off to production. Go ahead and run Firebase Deploy from the command line, which will give you a URL for the webhook handler. Now go back to the Coinbase dashboard and set up that URL as your webhook subscription. Congratulations, you can now accept crypto payments from your customers. I'm I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. Make sure to like and subscribe and consider supporting this content by buying a lifetime membership with crypto or any one of my individual courses. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.